Hello, hello. <laughs> hey, remember back in March, we were doing March of the Mammoth, and I decided I would embark upon Don Quixote by Michael de Cervantes. Um, March was an interesting month for me, as uh, you probably know from other videos on this channel. I read the first, first part one, part one of the uh, ing in ingenuous gentleman Don, Don Quixote of La Mancha. I read uh, the first part right about to that little red, that little red marker there. And I figured, and I actually, I, I got to that about the end of March and then I stopped and went, okay, I'm just going to stop. And I'm going to think about that part because where my brain's at. And, um, what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on one little conversation in this first part, first part of the book. So Don Quixote, uh, Michael, uh, de Cervantes, uh, a, uh, soldier, uh, tax collector, um, uh, while he was in prison, started started got the idea for Don Quixote, which is uh, this story uh, story of a uh, kind of a minor a member of kind of minor uh, nobility uh, in Spain, uh, a Hidalgo, who um, reads so much uh, chivalric uh, um, stories. Uh, stays up late reading it, so lack of sleep that it dries up his brain, and he kind of goes he goes crazy. He suddenly believes that all these stories are actually true and is, decides to become a knight himself and go on adventures. Uh, and after his first kind of adventure, he picks up Sancho Paz, Sancho Paza, um, promising him and uh, he's going to get, get to rule his own island, Insula, uh, that he, he's, he's gets, he, he will, he will get his thing. And, and Sancho Paza is very kind of a simple guy. He actually sort of, um, he, uh, Don Quixote in some ways, kind of convinces him, despite him very much seeing that these windmills are giants, that um, that maybe there's a point here. And also just sort of kind of a greed thing. Sancho Paz is a very earthy character. He's greedy for for food. He's greedy for um to get wealth. He wants to get what he wants to get wealth. And he thinks like, ah, I'm gonna go along in this and he's been promised great, you know, he'll get to govern, he'll get to have great riches instead of being kind of just a humble peasant in um Don Quixote's uh village. Um his his niece and housekeeper and the local priest and uh, barber are quite kind of horrified by uh, Don Quixote's kind of having gone mad. They do they blame these books of uh, chivalry uh, and indeed they go through them. Uh, the priest seems to know very a lot about these books. He seems to have studied all of them carefully. And as they're deciding which ones to burn, he kind of does a little recitation on, oh, we'll save this one, but oh, that one can go in the fire and stuff like that. Cervantes' own book, actually, one of his own books gets saved from the fire, which, you know, is is kind of a, is kind of a funny thing right there. Um, and yeah, yeah, there are are many, many misadventures. There's many, uh, like, uh, inter. Uh, interwoven other tales in this. Uh, Cervantes is making fun of chivalric romances. Chivalric mo romances were a very old tr tradition by even by by Quixote's time. This is like they go back like a couple of hundred, couple of hundred years. You know, prose and uh, verse narratives of you know fantastical stories with knights going off on quests. Uh, a lot of times there are, you know, romances with ladies. Uh, there's also just kind of romance in the, in the uh, more kind of, fan oh, fantastical, marvelous adventure, that sense of a romance as well. But by the time Cervantes was actually writing Don Quixote, this was, was pretty out of fashion. Uh, had been, you know, it had been criticized by kind of a clerical, uh, you know, the priestly cast of, of people as like, these are frivolous stories that are just, you know, distracting people from, you know, from um you know you know you should be you should be focusing on more kind of serious serious stories and indeed uh just with the fashions of the time there was a lot of people who um um just secular readers were also having that kind of uh starting to have that kind of reaction to it of like these are just they're lies they're fantastical they're not realistic uh and uh Cervantes um is both is, as the best kind of someone who who will satirize something also, you can tell that he really loves these stories because he he basically makes his own uh, makes his own kind of interwoven all these different stories examples of chivalric stuff makes fun of the genre but obviously knows it very deeply as deeply as a lot of the priests who would condemn it in this book but also um, also uh, uh, also seem to know a lot about it.
And so what I want to focus on um, is is just this one little bit, because I am a neophyte. This is my first time reading Don Quixote. This is something that, you know, it's like Shakespeare. There's a lot of people, a lot of very smart people who have gone through these books and, and um, picked out, plucked out stuff and have a lot more complex thoughts. But I want to just kind of focus on one little thing, which comes um, kind of near, near the end of, of part of part one, uh, where Don Quixote is let out of the cage that he's been imprisoned in, told he's been enchanted. There's a theme that people uh, kind of make up stories to fool him into doing stuff that they want, thus compounding all of his other, um, all of his other kind of delusions of, uh, of, of, of giant windmills. Uh, there's a, uh, a wizard that apparently swept in and bricked up his library when actually it was the priest and the, and the barber and the housekeeper and his niece who did all that when they were burning his books. They say, Oh no, a wizard came in and did it all. So it's like, you know, they're adding fuel to the fire that way. Um, poor Don Quixote gets just beaten to hell. Him and Sancho Paz just are, are continually getting whacked and beaten. And it's, it's very kind of slapstick funny in that sense. But, but we also get uh, things where like Don Quixote gets let out of his cage and he has a little bit of a, uh, has a little bit of a talk with uh, a canon. Um, this is a priest who works at, who is um, centered around uh, the, uh, the cathedral in, I think it's Toledo uh, where, um, but they, they meet him on the road and he's kind of, he's curious about, Don Quixote, because he's this guy who's like, you know, he displayed a very fine intelligence when he spoke and responded to questions. His feet slipping from the stirrups has been said, as has been said many times before, only when the subject was chivalry. So it's like, you're an intelligent guy, but when you get him onto the subject of chivalry, he's just like, suddenly he's super delusional. And the canon, who, uh, like like a lot of the other kind of priestly characters in this thing, uh, you know, so says like, oh, you know, Chival all these ro romantic chivalry books, these sh books, the chivalric fantastical tales are terrible, but also is very into them at the same time. Um, cause he, he confesses that he actually tried to write uh, a book, a book of uh, chivalric romance, but, um, soon found that, well, the really good ones that, are uh, the, the public, the, the public doesn't like, uh, and you know, the, the ones that are terrible are the ones that, you know, the, that, that are like, it's a kind of a complaint of authors all over the world. It's like, oh, the really good stuff just doesn't get appreciated by the audiences. But he says, for myself, I can say that when I read them, chivalric romances, as long as I do not set my mind to thinking that they are all frivolous lies, I do derive some pleasure from them. But when I realize what they actually are, I throw them, even the best of them, against the wall, and would even toss them in the fire if one were near, and think they richly deserve the punishment for being deceptive and false and far beyond the limits of common sense, like the founders of new sex and new ways of life. Um, so he kind of, kind of said, he's trying to argue, uh, you know, Don Quixote away from this thing. It's like, you know, you're seem to be thinking, it seems to me, Senor Don Quixote says that the intention of your grace's discourse has been to persuade, persuade me that there are no knights errant in the world, and that all the books of chivalry are false, untrue, harmful, and of no value to the nation, and that I have done wrong to read them, and worse to believe them, and worse yet to imitate them, by setting myself to the task of following the extremely difficult profession of knight errantry which they teach, and you deny that there ever was an Amadeus Amadeuses in the world, whether of Gaul or Greece, or any of the other knights that fill the writings. And, you know, the canon, the canon of Greece, Amadeus being one of the uh, great kind of examples of a chivalric, chivalric knight uh, in, in, in this, um, in, in this, in this sort of, uh, in this sort of thing. And, you know, you know, and Don Quixote is very much like, you know, how can they possibly be a lie being so, so because they so closely resemble the, the resemble, resemblance to the truth to tell us about the father, the mother, the nation, uh, the family, the age, the birthplace, and the great deeds. And, you know, goes on to talk about how, like, you know, he, you derive great pleasure and delight from these tales, and then drive away the melancholy and improve the spirits. And that he also just argues, like, you know, the guy, the man I was before, uh, I've been greatly improved by becoming, I've become a better man because I've become a knight, uh, that I've taken up these kind of great, uh, these great ideals in, uh, what Cervantes definitely kind of depicts as, uh, very much, uh, kind of a very corrupt, you know, it's the corrupt real world. It's sort of, it's like, well, this is the real world. Um, and Don Quixote is, 
uh, part of his insanity, uh, well, A, he, he really does see things that aren't there, but, and he's a kind of, he's the fool character that way, but he's also somebody who's like, who really wants to, um, who wants to defend the weak. He wants to right the wrongs and, uh, he's, he's very idealistic about it. He goes up against, he frees galley slaves at one point, which is directly kind of going against the crown, uh, which is sort of a, sort of a dangerous thing. And indeed, you know, they come for him. They come for him later in the novel because of that. And, uh, you know, it's like, there's kind of real consequences there. So, you know, uh, this and this is a tale. This this tale of Don Quixote. It's a it's a fantastical tale. But Don Quixote uh, Cervantes does a very kind of mischievous thing of like saying, "Oh no, this is a history. This is a true history." And we have a chronicler who it, it pushes it so far in that direction that they're in Don Quixote is in the middle of a fight, and the and the narrator comes up and goes, "Oh." I'm sorry. We don't have any more. Uh, we don't have any more sources. I'm. I will have. I have to go look. And then he recounts going to look. And oh, look! I came upon this uh, Arabic uh, writer who um, who seems to have written about Don Quixote. And he gets it translate. And the narrative picks up exactly where it cut off again, uh, so that he can continue on. He can continue on with the story. And indeed, we start. We end the first part of this. The thing saying, well, like, oh, there's no more sources. We've got a couple of like uh, these poems and like epitaphs, um, but that's all we that's all we have. But hopefully, maybe I'll find more if people could remunerate me for my stuff. It's very much like this is a history, and I mean that is the sort of thing that the priest is putting forward as this is what you should uh, this is what you should devote yourself to, Don Quixote. You should read the histories of great men, the real histories of great men, not do all this frivolous, uh, frivolous, fantastical stuff, but. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's interesting that we, um, it's a book where you very much have the priest characters for performing the function, uh, that society up until this point, uh, kind of just at the start of the, uh, the Renaissance perform. They are the regulators of knowledge. They're the regulators of what stories are going to be believed. We're going to regulate how the Bible is read. Um, and you know, as all good censors, they're very careful readers of what of what gets put forward, so they can approve or disapprove of something. And this whole thing of popular popular stories that just ever get spread everywhere and maybe don't fill uh, don't uh, follow a dogma uh, are are kind of disturbing disturbing to the priests. Um, you know, there is a sort of th certain thing here of the chivalric knight uh, going out on the stuff. It's very much a Christian knight. And there's an idea of kind of uh, these chivalric knights is sort of a kind of a Jesus figure of somebody who is going out to right wrongs, who is going to lead by example as part of this, part of the power of these, of, of these stories over Don Quixote is that they, that, that, that the knights kind of show a great example of how human life could be lived. Um, and while you can get that from, you know, non, nonfiction um, or the Bible, which you know, there's a certain thing of uh, of um, when the the canon talks about new sex, it's like a, this is like oh this is this is um, this is somehow competing with the story the story of Jesus Christ. You're putting up other stories, and are you um, you're you're I mean, especially for Don Quixote, who is such a fervent uh, um, kind of fundamentalist uh, in how much he believes in the truth of the words. Absolutely. That's a part of his madness. You have to look at something like uh, the Bible and, you know, people who take that as literal, uh, you know, everything in the Bible is literally true. And maybe they're kind of slight madness that way. And I mean, a part of the Roman Catholic Church has been to kind of interpret the Bible and to kind of tone down what they want and raise up what they want for whatever reasons. But you could also say it's a way of, of being readers that the, the, the big the big function of uh, a church is being readers of a work of uh, this, this work of stories. Um, so there's definitely that thing of like, we're having different sex coming up with this. And I also, it made me think of uh, that, you know, um, Machiavelli's The Prince was written in, was it 1532? So, you know, almost 70 years before Don Quixote, but that is where you do get, start getting Renaissance things of here's, here is another, other examples, other philosophies of life getting put forward, um, who are perhaps, uh, peeling back, peeling back what the, uh, 
the kind of accepted accepted dogma and say no this is the real this is real stuff and we're going to put forward a uh, a different kind of philosophy a different way of maybe how we're going to regulate life that being political theory um and also there's just sort of a thing of kind of boundaries of imagination that's getting explored uh in this conversation in this book of like you know uh there's the boundaries of imagination being like you know the church and the priest saying like no this is this is how far you can go. Um, there's also just the thing of like with this new Renaissance and uh, the idea of um, um, reason of 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 humanism of the kind of thing of like also rejecting something like a chivalric romance uh, because it's not kind of it's not based on reality. It's not thought. I mean, you get that a lot nowadays. Like people who like I'm just not into fantasy. You know, it, I need to read. If, it, if I'm going to read fiction, it's got to be realistic fiction. And you know, the great charge being like, oh, I didn't believe that in this book. That it, it didn't, it didn't convince me that this was reality uh, in a way. So there's, there's there's things like that. There's also just the idea, you know, that Cervantes I think is probably you know how with this figure of Don Quixote as this kind of um, this this a main character being. Um, insane of, of not having that connection with reality of, of sanity and insanity. And, you know, it's like, he's walking through this world, believing um, absolutely that these chivalric tales are, are true and reacting to uh, what seems to be a very kind of a portrait of, you know, uh, a Spanish society, which has its corruption, which has, you know, uh, women getting paid for sex. Um, it's got, you know, it's just, it's sort of like it's life. And you have this figure coming through who is very much like, oh, you know, no, you're a princess. Um, oh, those, you know, and, and kind of having all these kind of very ideas. You've imprisoned these men and sent, sent them away to do ho horrible hard labor. That's wrong. That's a wrong thing to do in this society, uh, which is also sort of got a Christ-like thing to it of uh, a figure who is maybe kind of kind of radical, radical kindness uh, coming in and saying, no, you're wrong. You're what you're doing to these people is wrong. And then being, uh, being punished, punished for it or ridiculed for it uh, is, is sort of interesting, interesting thoughts uh, in, in, um, in, in Don Quixote. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it is a, it's a silly, funny tale, um, but it's also kind of funny, fun to kind of just center in and think about this character of Don Quixote uh, and and this discussion with a priest. And, and you know, it's the priest who Don Quixote says, "You as the priest, you are blaspheming by um, by uh, denying the existence of these chivalric figures." Uh, that um, you know, and he talks about and. Don Quixote talks about his faith, uh, which is sort of an, that's mischievous kind of thing of like, you're, you're using a priest like figure to say, uh, dude, dude, why are you believing in these made up stories? It's like, you know, as an atheist, I'm, you have to go with, it's like, well, is the Bible a made up story that people absolutely believe in? And like, in a where the authority for that belief comes from, it's like, this is something that's been that is, if it's accepted by everyone, it's not insanity. If it's uh, if it's only one figure who's decided that this is the way the world is uh, in a world that nobody else does, then it's out of the norm. It's not normal. Uh, so that, which you know, has gotten mined a lot with the uh, the the figure of the um, of the mad the madman uh, in 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 the literature, uh, which you know, Don Quixote is obviously uh, it's the, it's one of the it's one of the kind of ur texts for that that idea. So yeah, yeah, that is my little little check in for March of the Mammoth. I'm gonna start on to uh, uh, the the second half of this book now. That's good. I'm glad I got that video out of this out of me this out of me so I can go on go on with it. Uh, how did how did your uh, how did your March of the Mammoth go? Um, this is my combination. I guess this is my combination of March of the Mammoth with uh, maybe Midrash, which I'm too early for. Uh, but God, by the time I get to the second half of this book, will probably be in November. So yeah, whatever. All right, more videos later.